Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Well, today I'm going to pick up on part two of our in-depth study of Mark chapter 16, verse 15 through 18. Now, I'm not going to do a review today on yesterday. What I want to do is do this one today, and then maybe tomorrow, there will be three parts to this, okay? Maybe tomorrow, just strategically hit everything again and recap it. But today, what I want to talk about is, you know, I showed you in Scripture that the future believers who would believe and be baptized would do these special signs and wonders, these miracles. And I said that this baptism was not water baptism, that it was the baptism of Holy Spirit that Jesus was talking about here. Now, look, this scripture is in red, and Jesus said it. So what he says is true, and I believe that. I don't care what a theo theology person says, I respect a person who's been to school, and I don't mean disrespect toward any theologian or any pastor or teacher, but I am going to say this straight out, guys. If what they say does not completely line up with what Jesus said, I am out. I'm not listening to them, and I'm not believing them, because Jesus himself warned us that tra traditions, things that people do and make a habit of, make it a little church system thing, the traditions and the doctrines, that means teachings of men, make the word of God of no effect. And I tell you this all the time. What you believe about God is going to determine what you expect and what you can receive from God. So if I believe every wind of doctrine because somebody's studied or they believe that this is what they have experienced and they make the Bible fit what they believe, and they aren't taking Jesus in red. Jesus said, I'm truth. And Jesus is either a red-letter liar, or he is truly the Son of God who came to bring us truth. And I'm going to believe Jesus. I'm just going to believe him. He's the one that died for me. He's the one that gave me the opportunity. He paid all the fees to get me adopted, to make me a son of God, filled with God's spirit, where I can pour heaven out on earth and change this world. No theology professor, nor any pastor, and not even this teacher right here has done that for anybody. So I'm just going to choose Jesus over everything, okay, guys? See, I can get worked up over this. I love Jesus. I love him, and I'm going to represent him, and I'm going to be as much like him as I can so I can help people who are hurting. And I can't do that if I start taking a powerless religion and walking in that. Because the only place I'm going to walk is into a church, and I'm going to sit down on a pew on a Sunday, and I'm going to sit soaking sour and pray for the rapture to hurry up and happen. And I don't live that way. I get out of bed every day with intention. I'm going to love people the way God loved them, and I'm going to change their lives with the gospel, the good news of the kingdom of God. So now that I've got through preaching, let's get into this teaching today. Today, I, So I had showed you yesterday that this baptism that Jesus was talking about was not water baptism because in Matthew 3, 11, John the Baptist says, the one who comes after me, after me, okay, he, being Jesus, will baptize you in Holy Spirit and fire, okay? So we know that Mark chapter 16 is after John the Baptist because John the Baptist had already been beheaded and was dead. John's job, by the way, was to do a baptism of water and to preach to people to repent. That means to change their heart and their minds toward God. He was preparing their hearts to receive the message that Jesus would bring. That was what he was supposed to do. He was the forerunner for Jesus to prepare people for the message that Jesus was bringing, okay? Now, so let's talk about the fact that I made that comment about this is not water baptism, okay? Because I've told you so far three or four different wrong doctrines that's out there that's twisted that says that uh, it's not whosoever believes, it's special people that's been pre-selected. Uh, we talked about the fact that people will teach that the gifts and the baptism of Holy Spirit passed away, that it happened once in, uh, you know, 
at Pentecost in Acts chapter 1 and 2. Now, that's what I want to talk about today because I want to show you clearly in the Bible that the baptism of the Holy Spirit did not, was not a one-time event in Acts chapter 1 and 2. It is not. And I'm going to show you that today. And I'm also, while I'm teaching you that, I'm going to also show you where becoming a believer, getting water baptized, is not the same thing as being baptized in Holy Spirit. I'm going to show you clearly in the Word of God the difference. So let's go over to Acts chapter 8. And I want to pick up, I'll set you a setting here. This is in Samaria. Philip has gone to Samaria. And uh, he is there preaching and teaching and performing miracles. We see that in verse 6. It says, And Philip spake, and the people hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Okay, so let's keep going. And I want to hop down to verse 12. And he's, he's there, and it says, And when they, the people in Samaria, believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, watch this, they were baptized, both men and women. So what we see in verse 12 is that Philip preached. They believed in Jesus and made him their Lord and Savior. Lord being primary, by the way. Got to make him your Lord, guys. He has to be invited into your life every day, all the time, and you give him your life. You make him your Lord, your master, your supreme authority. He has to be your Lord. You believe in Jesus and make him your Lord. You confess with your lips that Jesus is your Lord. And then here we see people were water baptized. Not baptized in Holy Spirit, water baptized. Now watch. And then Simon the sorcerer himself believed also. And Simon was baptized so Simon became a believer and was baptized in water. And he continued with Philip. And Simon wondered, beholding the miracles and signs that Philip performed. Now watch this. Verse 14. This is so good. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John want to stop here and tell you, did you know that Peter and John traveled between 30 and 50 miles, and they weren't in a little red Corvette, okay? So 30 to 50 miles was not like a 45-minute drive for them, okay? They immediately left and went to this town. Now, let's see why they left and went in such a hurry. And when they came down to Samaria, they prayed for them that they might receive Holy Ghost. So see, we've got that people believe and make Jesus Lord. They're water baptized, but they're not baptized in Holy Spirit. Or Peter and John wouldn't have traveled 30 to 50 miles to make sure they were baptized in Holy Spirit. Let's keep riding. Here we go, verse 16. For as yet, he, being Holy Spirit, by the way, Holy Spirit is a he, he was fallen upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So right here, it's very clear. They believed. They were water baptized. And then Peter and John came and baptized them in Holy Spirit. And watch this. And, and then they laid hands on them, the people in Samaria, and they received Holy Ghost. Okay. So that's right here shows us that it's all three and that it's not necessarily... Uh, and, and later in Scripture, you'll see that some people were uh, became believers and received the baptism of Holy Spirit and then later got water baptized. But it's okay. The, it doesn't matter the order of baptism of water and baptism of Holy Spirit. It can be either or or at the same time. The, the thing is, is that we have to make sure that people are believers first and that they actually are believers and not confessing sinners, okay? If somebody could just be converted to Christianity by saying a sinner's prayer, Jesus wouldn't have had to die. God could have continued to use the old religious system of Judaism and just kept converting people. But converting and going to a temple and giving a lamb every once in a while did not truly change people. 
people have to get born again. And part of getting born again is making Jesus your Lord, receiving him as your Lord, making him your Lord, not, not just saying some little sinner's prayer or even saying, I'm going to let you be my Lord. No, it says, hey, you can come in here and clean this house out and put your furniture in because you're living in me now. And I'm going to be like you. Okay. So here in Scripture, we want to make sure that people are become believers, true followers of Jesus Christ. Okay. And they become disciples and let him be their Lord. Then they're baptized in water. And then they are also as well baptized in Holy Spirit. Uh, let's see if I want to say anything else. I think I might sign off today, but I'm not through. I still have some more to teach on this a little bit tomorrow. Uh, well, let me throw this in. Did you know that Acts chapter 8, where Philip is in Samaria, and then we have Peter and John coming to make sure that people, they traveled so far away to make sure people were baptized in Holy Spirit and had received him. Okay? Watch this. This is amazing to me. When you study, it's all right there. Did you know that this was in uh, 37 A.D.? This is one year before Paul ever got converted and saved, made Jesus his Lord, and was baptized in Holy Spirit. So see, Acts chapter 1 and 2, it was not a one-time event. We see people getting baptized in Holy Spirit here in 37 A.D. in Samaria, new believers, and then we're going to see later on over here in Acts chapter 9, this is 38 to 42 A.D. They're not sure of the timeline with Paul, but it's around the 38 A.D. timeline. Paul gets uh, born again and baptized in Holy Spirit. So see, getting born again and making Jesus your Lord and getting water baptized and baptized in Holy Spirit is absolutely biblical, and it wasn't a one-time pouring out. Poor Paul, he wasn't even the next person after the uh, pouring out of Holy Spirit at Pentecost. He didn't receive the baptism of Holy Spirit until 38 or 39 A.D. And the best that we can tell is that Jesus died and resurrected in 33 A.D. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to throw that in because I think that's very interesting. That's a note that I have in my Bible is that this uh, event in Samaria was before Paul, the great apostle, had come on the scene. Well, I'll see you here tomorrow. I love you. Bye-bye.